We are the Gujarat Technological University. Since its inception over a decade ago, GTU has been empowering young and curating minds to realize their true potential. Over 4 lakh inspired students are enrolled with one of the premier academic universities in India. With more than 450 affiliated colleges in its fold operating across 5 zones of the state, GTU, the International Innovative University, your place to move forward. Okay, so good morning everybody. Uh, last time we have discussed about uh, phase shift key. In phase shift key, the information is stored in form of a phase. And uh, PSK has many variants, but the, the two uh, very important variants of PSK are BPSK and QPSK. So we have covered the BPSK in last lecture. So in this lecture, we are going to cover the QPSK waveform. We have gone through the various property of BPSK like as a mathematical expression, the graphical presentation, constellation diagram, bandwidth requirement, the transmitter receiver structure and we have even compared uh, or today we try to compare the BPSK scheme with the QPSK scheme also. So most of the part of today's lecture is basically we will discuss about the QPSK scheme. Now whatever the schemes we have learned so far, among the scheme, the QPSK scheme is a special uh, attention is required because in QPSK scheme, they have lots of applications. Uh, in today's uh, wireless communication, the QPSK scheme is playing a key role, whether it may be a talk of uh, WCDMA or it may be a satellite communication. QPSK is playing a very important role in all of the today's advanced wireless communication scheme. So here in today's lecture we will try to discuss the various aspects of the QPSK scheme and how the QPSK scheme is more powerful modulation scheme compared to the other conventional modulation scheme. So we try to cover this topic in today's lecture as we start from here so q stands for quadrature quadrature is generally considered as a 90 degree phase shift of any signal we will take a look why yeah, uh, this uh, uh, this is known as a quadrature or where the 90 degree phase shift is to be considered so q stands for quadrature psk stands for this uh, phase shift key and here in psk we have already learned about the BPSK. So in BPSK is known as a uh, 2RE signal. In its BPSK is simply known as a 2RE signal where M is equal to 2. So it has only two symbol S1 symbol and S2 symbol. For S1 symbol we are transmitting with a 0 degree phase shift. S2 symbol we are transmitting with 180 degree phase shift. And in phase shift key, the informations are recorded in form of a phase. So receiver have to identify the phase and accordingly the receiver can recover the information in form of a bits 0 and 1. Now in QPSK, we have a group of a 2 bits. So they have a 4 combination. So the constellation size is 4. They have a 4 points, 4 symbols are there. So that's why it is known as a quadrature phase shift key. They have four phase, uh, four faces. Uh, four faces are there. In QPSK also, the information is stored in terms of a phase. So this belongs to the phase shift key. So this characteristic of the QPSK remains same with the phase binary phase shift key. Only the difference we can observe here in binary phase shift key, the total number of symbols are two. So it is known as a two RE PSK signal. Where in QPSK the total number of symbols are 4, so it is known as a 4 RE uh, phase shift key. The very important part of QPSK, the QPSK is very popular modulation schemes. 
and uh, it say there are lots of applications of QPSK that we have to consider. The very important application of the QPSK is the WCDMA is known as a wideband code division multiple access. This WCDMA is a part of the third generation wireless communication technology. It has been adopted over there. So the, in WCDMA, the major modulation scheme is the QPSK. Then if we talk about the satellite communication, so in satellite communication also QPSK plays very important role and QP, QPSK is the key modulation scheme in satellite communication also. Apart from this, the QPSK scheme is also part of various advanced wireless technology schemes which are running today. And whatever the wireless communication scheme in 4G and 5G, they are among them also they are using the QPSK and higher version of the QPSK scheme. So QPSK scheme has been given a special attention because the QPSK scheme has a lots of advantage and QPSK scheme and because of that the QPSK scheme becomes very very much popular and very potential scheme of a modulation in today's wireless communication system. So what we cover today here, we cover the mathematical presentation of QPSK signal. This is one part. Then we discuss about the waveform of the QPSK signal. Then we discuss the another uh, alternatives of QPSK and that is offset QPSK. Why we need to uh, transverse from QPSK to uh, offset QPSK? Why we have to migrate from QPSK to offset QPSK that we try to learn in this lecture. Then we discuss about the constellation diagram of both of them and then we discuss about the QPSK modulator and demodulator. So these are the portions that we are going to cover in today's lecture. So let's start with the first one, how mathematically represent the QPSK signal. So QPSK signal can be mathematically represented in this form why QPSK of T is let's say is the output of your QPSK modulator that can be described by square root ES by TB. TB is generally defined the time duration. Uh, in some cases it is also represented by TS the symbol duration right. So it can be represented as either TB or TS that you can understand here. So it can be defined as a square root 2 ES by TB where ES is the an, a, a symbol energy. And TB is either a bit duration or we can consider as a symbol duration. Then it is multiplied with the cos omega ct plus pi i. Pi i is the phase which is inclined with the symbol i. Phase of symbol i. So in QPSK we have a four symbol S1, S2, S3 and S4. So accordingly this pi i can also take the four value. This pi i can be represent as i minus 1 into pi by 2. Uh, I will don't require this one. It's simply represented as a pi i is equal to i minus 1 into pi by 2 where i is the index of a symbol. So symbol can have any value like as a 1, 2, 3 or 4. We have a 4 symbols are there in QPSK. So it can take any value 1, 2, 3, 4. So these are the index of symbol and accordingly the pi i can be calculated. So if we start with i is equal to 1 and put here so that we have a 0 degree phase shift this table represent everything. So we have a power symbol that can be uh, given the name as s1, s2, s3 and s4. All the symbols are a 2 bit combination. So in BPSK layer we have a 1 bit is equal to 1 symbol. We have a 2 symbols 0 and 1 here. In QPSK we have a 4 symbol and all the symbols are a 2-bit combination. So we may have a 0, 0 bit combination, 0, 1 bit combination, 1, 0 bit combination or 1, 1 bit combination. And the value of i which corresponds with the symbols are 1, 2, 3 and 4. So 4 symbol and these are the indexes of 4 symbol. So if you start with i is equal to 1 here, so that will be turned out with the first phase. This is known as a pi 1. This phase which is correspondence or related with the symbol 1 that is 0 degree if you put i is equal to 2 in this equation then 2 minus 1 into pi by 2 so that is pi by 2 so this is pi 2 if you put i is equal to 3 then we are getting here the phase as a pi degree and if you take the i is equal to 4 then we are getting the 
face is 3 pi by 2. So we may have a 4 face 0 degree which is related with the symbol 1. With the symbol 2 we have a face pi by 2. Then with symbol 3 we have a pi degree face set and symbol 4 we have a 3 pi by 2 degree face set. If you put all this thing in this equation theta i r uh, pi. So here we can say the first one here we can say what happens here the first phase here is the zero degree so it's omega ct plus pi i so here the pi one is equal to zero degree so if you put here in this equation in this equation zero degree so it, the equation will be reduce a square root to es by tb it's cos omega ct then we put pi two for symbol two that is pi by 2 degree phase shift so that is cos omega ct plus pi by 2 if you put pi 3 the phase 3 is pi degree so we can have a mathematical representation of symbol s3 is square root 2 es by tb cos omega ct plus pi and the similarly similar way for symbol 4 we can have a square root 2 es by tb cos omega ct plus 3 pi by 2 so that way we have four faces are there and uh, and this one face is related with the one symbol so all four symbol can be represented with the four face are there now if you discuss about the constellation diagram so the constellation diagram is basically represent of the magnitude of your symbol or mag or amplitude uh, amplitude of your symbol with the face so this constellation diagram is basically represent the symbol amplitude as well as the face of the symbol and face. So we have a four symbol are there and if four symbols are represent according to their amplitude and face. So first symbol uh, uh, which uh, yeah now we consider this is the amplitude and uh, energy amplitude square is equal to energy of your symbol es so that's why the amplitude can be represented as a square root of energy square root of energy of symbol es that we already uh, described in earlier lecture in bps case we are not going to describe so all the different symbol can be represent with the same amplitude so they can be represent with the uh, same value of uh, amplitude as a is equal to square root es yeah but they have they are different in terms of a phase so in the constellation diagram if you start with the uh, first phase uh, then here the x-axis is known as a real axis this is known as in phase component this component is known as a in phase component and the y-axis is known as a quadrature is represent the quadrature component which is of 90 degree then i phase so i phase and quadrature faces are 90 degree with each other then y axis represent the quadrature phase then x axis represent the in phase that is known as a real axis and y axis is known as a imaginary axis now here if we describe the symbol one so this is the symbol one s1 and what is the energy of symbol 1 square root es and what is the phase of symbol 1 so it is 0 degree so it can be represented on this axis this is the point now the symbol 2 which has the same amplitude square root es but the phase is pi by 2 so it is represented here on this axis that is this one you can consider as a pi by 2 so that can be represented here the, with the symbol S2. Symbol S2 is represented as a bit combination 0, 1. Symbol S1 represents the bit combination 0, 0. Now uh, the energy is the same. So the energy is also remains is the same as the square root S. Yes. This is also same energy of square root S. Yes. This is the point. Now the third symbol S3 has the same amplitude square root S. Yes but the phase is pi degree phase shift so this is the pi degree phase shift if you represent here this is the pi degree phase shift so with this one you can represent as a pi degree phase shift the amplitude is same so, so uh, but it's a negative direction so we can represent as a minus square root es here and uh, because of this one here uh, the phase is pi degree phase shift so it may place located over here now the symbol s4 is a 
with uh, same amplitude but in negative direction so represent as a minus square root es and uh, with the phase of 3 pi by 2 so if you can start from here and uh, so this is known as 3 pi by 2 phase difference so now what to conclude here is this in this constellation diagram we have a four symbol s1 s2 uh, s1 s2 s3 and s4 all are represent two, two bit combination s1 represents zero zero bit combination s2 represents zero one s3 represent one zero bit combination s4 represent one one bit combination they have the same energy so if you draw the circle here with the radius r and this radius r is to be kept as a square root es so all these points are on the surface or on the boundary of the circle so all this are on the circle or this four because they have the same magnitude yeah they have a different phase so this phase can be represented by zero degree pi by two degree pi degree and three pi by two degrees so this is the constellation diagram for qpsk symbol one can note this uh, a point uh, the QPSK have a four different symbols so they, they can represent with the same magnitude but the different phase so all are re represented with the amplitude here and it, okay now we will find the distance uh, between two symbol so uh, if you find the distance between two neighboring symbols so we have a combination of a four combination of neighboring symbol s1 and s2 are considered as a neighboring symbol s2 and s3 are also s3 s4 s4 s1 are considered as a neighboring symbol so between this neighboring symbol if you find the minimum distance so this is the minimum distance this distance is known as a minimum distance and what would be the minimum distance so you can apply the uh, triangular here this is the minimum distance that we have to we are at we have identified the minimum distance here this is symbol s2 this is symbol s3 and the same can be applied between s1 s2 s3 s4 and so so we will take one example between symbol s2 and s3 so this distance d minimum we, we are interested to find this distance is square root es distance this distance is also square root es distance so if you apply the trigonometric so d minimum square is square of square root of es plus square of square root es so that will be square and square root will be cancel around so it becomes es plus es 2es and if you take the square root then d minimum is square root 2es so that is represented here and what is the maximum distance is possible so maximum distance is possible between this one s1 and s3 or the maximum distance can be possible between this s2 and s4 so the maximum distance can be possible as like this one either this one or maybe this one that is the symbol s2 that is the symbol s4 this is the square root es this is also square root es so the maximum distance is possible here is the two time of a square root yes you can take a look of this so what happens here is the maximum distance is repre uh, sorry so the maximum distance here is represented as a square root of a two yes right now why this distance is important because the beat error rate uh, this beat error rate is basically highly correlated uh, highly correlated with the distance between the symbol and it is inversely proportional between the dist uh, uh, inversely proportional of the distance uh, between the symbol if uh, and this is the obviously we can understand because if there would be a higher distance between the symbol so like this one this is a small distance and it would be a higher distance so you can put the threshold here and here you can put the threshold here so threshold margin delta uh, that is one symbol s1 s2 here also symbol s1 s2 we take the two examples in which the distance between two symbol is smaller like as a d minimum and here you can say distance between two symbols are larger so this is the threshold margin this is delta one let's say delta one let's say and here the threshold margin let's say delta 2 and here delta 2 so obviously delta 2 is larger than delta 1 and if the threshold margin would be higher so more air is required to cross the boundary and whenever the point of symbol uh, any point of symbol s2 can be fall in this region crossing this boundary and fall in the different region so it will be receiver cannot be identified correctly and it will be treated as a error in a bit 
but if the margin is larger between two symbols like this one delta 2 not like small as delta 1 then more noise is required to cross that boundary and finally the number of bits in error can be reduced significantly so if the distance is uh, larger he if the distance is larger here then bit error rate can be significantly reduced so larger the distance is the better because in this the thresh we are getting more threshold margin and there would be more error is required to cross the boundary and the probability of getting more error is less and then we have a less number of bits are in error at the receiver and bit error rate is the number of bits receiving correctly divided by the total number of bits so that can be reduced significantly so that we can understand so bit error rate between the neighboring symbol s1 s2 s3 s4 is larger than the bit error rate between the s1 s3 s2 s4 etc so that we can note down here uh, but in this qpsk the main problems that we are getting is the symbols are uh, the first symbol s1 is transmitted with the zero degree phase set and most of the error and uh, noise are basically present on this one noise is mostly present as the zero degree phase shift so it is more susceptible with the noise zero degree phase shift is more sensitive to the noise variation and hence rather than the scheme the modify qpsk scheme is proposed and it is highly adapted in today's environment so most of the qpsk you can observe in the either maybe in satellite communication on or in a WCDMA case so you can have a different version of the QPSK symbol which uh, I have mentioned earlier so what is what would be it there so rather than the 0 degree phase shift pi degree phase shift uh, 3 pi uh, sorry pi by 2 degree phase shift pi degree phase shift, and a 3 pi by 2 phase shift the concept would be same we need to define a 4 phase but rather than this 4 phases 0 pi by 2 pi and 3 pi by 2 we can define the 4 different phase and what are these different phases so the equation can be rewrite here y qpsk of t is square root es by tb cos omega ct plus phi i where i is the index of the symbol so in earlier case in uh, phi i was of i minus 1 pi by 2 so if a different value of i if you place here we have got the four phase 0 degree pi by 2 degree pi degree and then 3 pi by 2 degree but in this modify qpsk we are we have a different equation rather than i minus 1 we have a 2i minus 1 into pi by 4 this is the difference so with this difference if you see uh, if you see this difference here then uh, if you put the different value of i in this equation so then we are getting pi 1 so pi 1 is the first we put i is equal to 1 here then it's a 2 minus 1 pi by 4 so that is of a pi by 4 then we put the different value here then we put i is equal to 2 here then we can have the 4 minus 1 3 pi by 4 this one then we get the i is equal to 3 we have 5 by 4 and 5 uh, uh, and, and for i is equal to 4 here we will get 4 into 2 8 minus 1 so 7 pi by 4 so we can have a 4 phase are here the first phase would be a pi by 4 next would be 3 pi by 4 then 5 pi by 4 and 7 pi by 4 pi, pi by 4 is simply equivalent to 45 degree 3 pi by 4 is equivalent to 135 degree 5 by 4 is 225 and the last phase 5 4 is equivalent to 315 degree 315 degree so that one uh, we can have and if you re if you if i put here this pi by 4 degree 5 1 in this equation here and the same you can apply for pi 2 pi 3 and pi 4 but for for examples i will just take only one examples in which the pi 1 can be taken from here and pi 1 can be put in this equation of y qpsk so y y qpsk this is not vpsk it's qpsk can be modified like the square root 2 es by tb cos omega ct plus pi by 4 this pi i is replaced with the pi 1 and the pi 1 is the pi by 4 this one so here it becomes a cos omega ct plus pi by 4 now what is the cos x plus y this equation can be represented as cos x into cos y 
minus sin x into sin y. Now this x is known that is omega ct here this one and y is what this is done as a pi by 4. So how this equation can be modified? So this equation can be modified as cos omega ct into cos pi by 4 minus sin omega ct into sin pi by 4. Now, if you replace the cos pi by 4 with its value as a 1 by square root 2, so 1 by square root 2 here, 1 by square root 2 here, and if you take it common, so our equation can be modified as square root 2 es by tb 1 by square root 2, and the part which is left over here would be a cos omega ct minus sin omega ct. So the sine is inverted and then would be added in a cos omega ct. We can say like this. So now uh, again, uh, with the similar table, what we have seen over here for simple QPSK, for this modified version of QPSK, if you put uh, this one, so that the symbol S1, S2, S3 and S4, the bit combinations are now changed. Uh, the first bit is known as I bit and the second bit is known as a Q bit. I bit, I bit means in phase, the Q bit means the quadrature phase shift. So that would be a combination of 1, 1, that would be 0 1 0 0 and 1 0 which is appropriate with the symbol s1 s2 s3 and s4 now the part which is going with the i phase this is in phase part and generally the in phase part is generally the part which is going with this x axis and the quadrature part which is generally going with the y axis that is sin omega city so what we can do here we can multiply this one with the, this one can be goes with the cos omega ct then one which can be goes with the minus sin omega ct and here we have equation cos omega ct minus sin omega ct the qpsk waveform have a pi by 4 degree phase shift if you put rather than pi by 4 degree phase shift if you take example of pi 2 where pi 2 is equal to 3 pi by 4 so if you put the 3 pi by 4 and you modify the equation so finally you are getting here so i part would be cosine part would be a minus this part is i part this part is the q part so sine part is known as a q part and i part is your cosine part so i part is the first part which is the minus cos omega ct for 3 pi by 4 case this is minus sine omega ct if you take the uh, a pi 3 phase is a pi pi by 4 and put up in earlier equation then we are getting i part the first part is minus cos omega ct q part would be sin omega ct and finally for 7 pi by 4 we are getting the first part is cos omega ct and the q part is the sin omega ct so that way you can uh, put up the different values of pi in this equation and you can separate out the i part which is the first part and q part which is the second part the i part is the, in the form of a cos so it can have a plus cos omega ct or minus cos omega ct and q part is in the form of sine it can have a plus sine omega ct or minus sine omega ct so what the difference we can observe here so no any phase the phase uh, here would be a zero degree in earlier case we have a the phase of zero degree uh, then we may have a phase of a pi by two then pi and three pi by two but here the phase are changed uh, so the phase are pi by 4 the first phase rather than the 0 degree in earlier case this this is 3 pi by 4 rather than pi by 2 in earlier case this is 3 pi by uh, pi pi by 4 the third phase rather than 3 pi uh, sorry this is rather than pi is earlier case and this one is 7 pi by 4 rather than 3 pi by 2 uh, compared to the earlier case so in the what were the problem in earlier case was the zero degree phase shift the most uh, zero degree phase shift uh, signal which is more sensitive to the noise because most of the noise are a zero degree phase shift now here we have a the first phase is now migrate from zero to pi by four degree phase shift so in pi by four degree phase shift we have no any problem of the noise it is more prone to the noise compared to the zero degree phase shift so this is the advantage we are taking over here so rather than this zero degree pi by two then all this now we have a new phases we have a new phases are the pi by four 3 pi by 4, 5 pi by 4 and 7 pi by 4. So accordingly, we prepare for constellation diagram and for constellation diagram, rather than the 0 degree, we have the first component is observed as, as a symbol 1 and that would be represent the 2-bit combination 1, 1, which is as square root 2 es uh, apart from 
uh, uh, so, uh, which is of a square root two es amplitude. So this uh, this sque square root es shows the amplitude, and the phase which it make with the uh, reference line. This is a reference line, so that is of forty five degree. And this component, which is represented on the, uh, on the x-axis, that is simply known as an in-phase component. That is represented by cos. And another component, which can be represented on y-axis, that is known as a quadrature component, simply represented by sine omega ct. Here you can see there are four symbols. The first symbol S1, which is represented by one one bit combination with the square root es amplitude and at the forty five degree, which is similar as this one forty uh, pi by four means forty five degree. The second is would be here is this one uh, three pi by four so it is simply represented as one thirty five degree. The next one would be two twenty five degree and the last one would be a three one five degree. So accordingly, we have a second symbol with the bit combination of zero and one here, which is of one thirty five degree. The third symbol here, which is with the same amplitude of square root es, it's all have a square root es amplitude. So can be represented like this. This is also a square root es amplitude. With this one zero zero bit combination, S three symbol can be represented with zero zero bit combination with two twenty five degree phase shift. And S four symbol we can represent it with the one zero uh, bit combination and the angle which it can make with the reference line would be a three one five degree. So you can represent here. There are four symbols are there like this. The first symbol with the forty five degree. The second symbol would be at uh, this is S one. The second symbol would be a one thirty five degree S two. Here there would be a third symbol. S three two twenty five degree and there would be a fourth S four degree, but this all are at the same distance from the origin square uh, square root ES. So if you uh, made a circle, then circle connect the, all the points. So all the points are at, at equal distance from the zero uh, origin zero because this this shows the same magnitude, right? So this is known as a QPSK and here why it is known as a QPSK because it has a two component that is I component in phase component and the Q component is known as a quadrature component. So they is a QPSK symbol is constructed by using the two component. One component is in phase component. The second component would be a out of uh, with a quadrature component. So that is known as a quadrature amplitude. Uh, sorry, quadrature phase shift key. So Q comes from this. Phenomena that they have two component. One is in phase, and another is a uh, uh, quadrature. Now here we uh, will find the distance. So distance will be maintained the same as earlier case. Uh, if you find the minimum distance, so minimum distance is the distance uh, which can be between the symbol S one and S two. So here we will uh, use this trigonometric examples. So this is the symbol S two. There is a S three. There would be origin. I, I uh, this part I repeat here, and this is the square root e s. This is the middle point. This is middle point in here. This part we don't know. This distance is known as a minimum distance between two neighboring symbol. This can be defined by the two. This is the d x. Suppose we can say this is the d x. So d minimum here. Is basically defined by 2dx. So what part we have to first find is the dx, and then we make it double. It is equivalent to the d minimum distance between two symbols. So if we apply the trigonometry here, this difference, uh, this is the 45 degree, and here if you give this a, a, b, and c, so we can say this is the cos 45 degree, and is equal to how you define this? That is this one. Or maybe a sine forty five degree. Let's say sine forty five degree because we are interested to find the dx. So that is the sine forty five degree is equal to the part which is a b and c. So that is a c divided by b c, right? So it is one by square root two, and this a c is simply defined as a dx which we are interested to find, and b c which is uh, the value of the amplitude. It's a square root of e s. So now what we can find here, the dx we can find here is the square root e s by square root two that is equivalent to square root e s by two. And then what is the d minimum we can find here? So d minimum is equal to two dx. So that is the two multiply with the square root e s by two. This square root two and this becomes a square root two. 
so that becomes square root 2 and square root es that becomes this 2 times square root es so these are the way how you can identify this one so that is the d minimum distance that d minimum distance we can found here is the square root 2 es which is similar as the earlier case in earlier case also we have find the minimum distance is between two neighboring symbol is the square root 2 es so there is no much difference in terms of a distance between two neighboring symbol now if you find the d max d max is the distance between the two symbol like as a s1 and s3 which are at far end s2 and s4 which are not a neighboring case so if you follow this line this is the square root es and this is the square root es so here if you consider this distance this is the origin zero this distance is s3 and s1 so this distance is square root es this distance is also square root es so what is the d max we can get over here this d max is the two time this one is the this one is the two time of square root es that is me. that is even similar to the earlier case now that also we have find the maximum distance is two time of square root yes. so this portion that you can uh, take a look of this okay so now we come to the waveform uh, this waveform we are interested to learn is about uh, uh, QPSK waveform so this is the first part is the QPSK uh, uh, the modulator has been shown we will even discuss about the QPSK modulator but first we are interested to learn about this the waveform so what we are basically doing here every bit one we can be treat as a one and every uh, zero can be treat as a minus one and uh, this bit is simply multiply with this combination so uh, the first uh, 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 whatever the bit stream here that is one zero one one zero 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 one one zero that is the random bit stream because uh, this one is basically coming from uh, uh, the information and information is random in nature so whatever the bit combination we are getting here they are also a random so we can separate out in a two parts the uh, old bits and even bits so first bit is considered as even bit then alternative bits the third bit uh, or we may have a different combination right so uh, you can consider the first bit would be zero bit so it's even then next to next would be even then next to next would be even then even then even here and the odd odd bits are the first bit so if this is my zeroth bit this is my first bit so first bit would be considered as uh, odd bit then alternative bits this is o for odd this e for even bit and o for odd bit here so then would be odd then again alternative bits are odd so here we have a combinations now why this uh, uh, splitting is important because this even bit is considered as i of t this even bit is simply considered as a i of t even bit and to be remain in a step of the odd bits and even bits the whatever the even bits this one bit is correspondence to this bit right so this is correspondence with this bit and we want to make in a step so so to make this in a so to make this uh, sorry this one is even bit and to make this in a step what we can do here is we expand this duration of tb to 2tb it means we can stretch the first bit even bit for a 2 tb time period then the next even bit is this one one then we can even stretch for a 2 tb time period sorry this one is uh, there will be my mistake uh, you can consider uh, this is up to here this one bit is first is a up to 2 tb time period then the next even bit is this one that can also be stretched for a two time duration rather than tb time to period then we have a next uh, even bit would be a zero so it can even stretch for a two tb time period so that would be a two tb time period the zero is also for a two tb time period so every even bits can be stretched for a two tb time period right and then this zero is correspondence with this one this zero is correspondence with this one and this one is correspondence with this one now the similar uh, okay so all this one we can multiply with the cos omega ct so cos omega ct would be multiplied with one if there would be a one 
we can transmit the cos omega ct and if there would be a zero then here the signal can be inverted so it, it can be transmitted with minus cos omega ct so accordingly here i of t cos omega ct can be constructed so what we have done here we can divide the symbol uh, uh, total number of bits in a two part even number of bits and odd number of bits even bits we have multiply with the cos omega we have stretch out for a 2 tb time period every bit can be stretch out for a 2 tb time period multiply with the cos omega ct now we can follow the similar procedure for a odd number of bits so odd number of bits uh, can be considered as a q of t now for q of t this one is first bit zero so this zero can be stretched out for a 2 tb time period then the next orbit would be which one next would be this one would be a next orbit one so that would be a one then it can be stretched out for a 2 tb time period everyone every orbit can also be stretched out for a 2 tb time period then there would be a zero so that would be a zero then that would be a next orbit would be a one and one so this would be a one and one that would be multiplied with the sine omega ct here so earlier we have a even number of bits which is multiplied with the cos omega ct here we have odd number of bits which can be multiplied with the sine omega ct and again we we have a similar rule for a one we can have a sine omega ct and for zero we have a minus sine omega ct so this waveform is constructed as a q of t sine omega ct now we compile this both the term i of t cos omega ct and q of t sin omega ct so this one is compiled over here i of t cos omega ct one this negative sign q of t into sin omega ct and finally we are getting s of t and this s of t is our y qpsk of t signal so we can have a four phase can be observed in this one uh, this part this is how we compile why we compile here because we have already seen here we have even compiled the signal in this case this part is i part and this part is our q part right so this is the similar case here we can compile uh, we can split the signal in a two part odd and even bit multiply with cos and sine appropriately and then we can compile the signal so we can observe the four phase this pi by 4 there is nothing like as a pi by 4 so this minus pi by 4 is basically assumed as a 7 pi by 4 so the, here we are getting the 7 pi by 4 degree facet for which combination so this combination of the odd bit if you separate this here this one is the 1 and the 0 so for 1 and 0 we can have this one 7 pi by 4 phase shift now we go for a pi by 4 phase shift we can go for a pi by four phase shift so we we take a look of next odd and even symbol like this one this is one and one 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 bit combination for one one bit combination we have a pi by four phase shift so this is for one one bit combination this one is for one zero bit combination and similar you can have for this one also this three pi by four minus three pi by four is basically considered as a plus five pi by four and so forth so here we are getting the 7 pi by 4 degree phase shift here in the next time we are getting the pi by 4 degree phase shift and so forth so this signal can be constructed in this form with the various uh, degree uh, uh, various phase uh, combination and this phase combination are belongs to the pi by 4 pi, 5 pi by 4 7 pi uh, sorry 3 pi by 4 5 pi by 4 and 7 pi by 4 all the phase are belongs to of this any four out of this any four combination any one combination can be selected depends on this if you have bit combination one one this is your even bit and this is your odd bit then you can have we can have a pi by four phase shift if this your even bit is zero and odd bit is one we can have three pi by four even is zero odd is zero pi pi by four even is one odd is zero you can have this bit combination and so this is one part we need to learn here and the modulator is simple uh, the modulator in the binary sequence we are converting serial to uh, parallel and basically serial to parallel conversion is this also work as a uh, splitter odd bits are odd bits uh, even bits are sent here and odd bits are sent in a lower branch so even bit are considered as i of t bits and odd bits are considered a q of t bit multiply with uh, I, I of t bit is multiplied with the cos term and q of t bit will multiply with the sine omega ct so we have a one local oscillator which produces a cosine it can be passed through the 90 degree phase shift so it will be turned out to sine omega ct 
multiply here with the q of t so here we are getting i of t cos omega ct which is similar like this one and here we are getting the q of t into sin omega ct which is similar like uh, this one uh, like this one and then finally we are combining over here so this part uh, that we you need to understand okay now there is one uh, uh, there is a uh, demerits of qpsk we have discussed about the advantage or merits of the qpsk but qpsk uh, is has also some disadvantage here we look at this disadvantage and then uh, what is the solution how you can overcome this issue of uh, qpsk that we will discuss so the main main problem with the qpsk is the sudden phase shift or the abrupt abrupt phase uh, shift you can see for example if your uh, present bit would be one one and then the next bit combination of would be zero zero so it means you are here one one and the next next bit combination would be zero zero i mean here so if you see this phase shift so how much phase shift here is pi by 4 this one is pi by 4 and this one is pi pi by 4 pi by 4 minus pi by 4 so you may have you are getting here pi degree phase shift so this is the abrupt change this part this is the abrupt change sudden change we can say and this where this change is observed here so this change is observed here there will be sudden change and such kind of things is known as a uh, jump discontinuity and if such kind of a sudden phase shift what is the problem we, we you can face here in the signal it increase the bandwidth of signal this is the severe drawback of qpsk if the bit combinations are changed from 11 to 00, zero or the same case happens if you have a 0, 01 is the present bit and next bit would be a 10 like this one 0, 01 to 10 zero. so again if you run here so again you have a pi degree phase shift so this pi degree phase shift is considered as a significant phase shift and because of the pi degree phase shift the problem is the bandwidth is expanded in a frequency domain so because of such kind of a discontinuity in your signal at the boundary between two symbol uh, we have a problem of a jump discontinuity pi degree phase shift can be the maximum phase shift can be observed and uh, this bit combinations are not in our control so it may be happens many times and then we have a the signal which increase the in the, uh, the uh, signal bandwidth is increased so result what happens in a result intercarrier interference we can have a separation like this one there will be one uh, 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 bandwidth there would be second bandwidth like as a b1 and b2 and if the signals are expanded in a bandwidth so we are we can have a uh, uh, intercarrier interference here like this this portion is intercarrier interference and here if you apply the filter like this one is low pass filter or bent pass filter then still you cannot remove cannot remove this portion this frequency component so this is the severe drawback here and now we have to see how we can reduce this drawback so this drawback can be reduced if we can reduce uh, this uh, phase difference between two symbols so if you see here the phase difference is not too much if you have a one one two one zero trans uh, transition so here you have only uh, here we have only if this is the case so we have only pi by 2 degree phase shift so if the same happens if here to here also we have a pi by 2 degree phase shift so if only single bit is change 1 1 2 0 1 right so what happens here only this bit is change uh, sorry uh, uh, this bit is remains the same only this uh, only this bit is change and this remains same so if single bit is change we can observe the pi by 2 degree phase shift which is smaller compared to this pi degree phase shift here we have a two case so what is the main thing in two case so both the bits are changed this one is changed to zero and this one is also changed to zero and here in the case of zero one to one zero also we have a change one to zero and this zero is also changed to one so this was the case but now if you have a change from one one to zero one 
so we can observe only pi by 2 pi degree phase shift because only single bit is changed this bit is same only this bit is change so if we can do something like that so between two neighboring sequence or between two neighboring symbol only single bit change so we can limit this phase difference on abrupt phase change from pi by 2 to pi by 2 degree that is the key but this is how you can do this because uh, whatever the bit sequence you are collecting uh, they are coming random in a fashion so you don't have any control over there so how if you try to play with that the original information can be lost so that is the problem so this one uh, how we can do effectively and uh, so that there is known as offset QPS scheme so if this phase shift is limit to pi by 2 rather than pi degree phase shift then the phase disk continuity can be reduced so that is the conclusion what we have discussed earlier and hence the bandwidth in increase uh, increment in can be reduced you can add one line here the bandwidth increment can be reduced in effective way how we can do this this can be achieved if rather than the two bit change simultaneously only single bit can change between two neighboring sequence so if you observe here any two neighboring sequence only single bit is changed uh, for example if you say from here 1 1 to 0 1 single bit is change 0 1 to 0 0 here what happens the 0 0 remains same but this is change 0 0 to 1 0 again this 0 will remain same this one is change 1 0 to 1 1 this one remains same so between two neighboring sequence the 1 1 bit are same and only one bit are change so how so if we go from 0 0 to 1 1 we have a pi degree phase shift because the two bits are changed here the same can be happens from 0 1 to 1 0 then we have even pi degree phase shift because 0 change with 1 and this one is also changed with 0 but there are some sequence like a 0 1 to 1 0 they will again the pi degree phase shift but if 0 0 to 0 1 if you go so only single bit is going to change the first bit remains same second bit is going to change so we have pi by 2 degree phase shift so we can make some arrangement so between two neighboring sequence if only single bit is change rather than the two bit change so we can reduce this we can control this set, this thing right so the key here to reduce the inter-carrier interference is to reduce the phase shift abruptly is to limit it to reduce the phase shift abruptly and limit it to pi by 2 is the only single bit should be changed between the two neighboring sequence rather than the two bit so that is the important part right and to achieve this offset uh, what we can do here so to achieve this one between i data and q data rather than to start from point to point we can start the q bit with some delay with some delay how much delay so we can have a delay of tb time period so basically what happens we can shift the signal q in right side with the tb time period so it can be delayed by the tb time period so now what happens now we see what happens in earlier case we have a one zero so basically now what happens if it is shifted over here so it can be expanded to the next db time period of the i data symbol right so this part is known as a offset so this scheme is known as a offset qpsk offset qpsk because in this case we can expand the q bit for tb time period uh, sorry uh, we can sorry uh, we can shift this uh, q data with a tb time period and then we can start so this offset is given as a tb time period now what advantage over here if you delay if the q bit is delay q data is delay by the tb time period then what advantage we are getting here the first sequence we are getting here is the one zero now the next sequence now this zero is repeat over here so the next sequence we are getting here is zero zero so what advantage we are getting here this combinations in this case zero zero bit so this one is repeated here so how many bits are deeper here so you can say this is the same only one bit is deeper so here one bit is deeper one bit change and if because of this one bit change we can have a pi by two degree shift okay now we can have a next combination 
so for the next combination also this is the zero one now if you compare this this zero zero would be same but this is the change so one bit is change here between two neighboring sequence so how much phase difference we can observe here is the pi by two not pi now we can do the same for here uh, this is the one one bit combination so we can see zero to one so one bit is change this is the same this one is same so because of this one bit is change this difference is pi by two difference so because of this scheme between any two neighboring sequence we can have a maximum phase difference is pi by two unlike to the pi degree phase shift in earlier case we have a maximum phase shift or phase shift is limited to the pi by degree pi by two degree phase shift so this intercarrier symbol can be reduced significantly and because of there is no bandwidth expansion we can separate it clearly by using individual band pass filter at the receiver side so this is the advantage and that's why the ortho or this offset qpsk is basically prefer over the qpsk symbol orthogonal qpsk is prefer over qpsk so what we are doing here rather than to start the bit to bit the qubit data is delay by tb time period and then we will start so this offset is given of a tb time period so this part you can even learn now we have a qpsk demodulator so in qpsk demodulator we have get the qpsk signal like this this is pi by 4 phase degree shift uh, uh, phase shift this is 3 pi by 4 pi pi by 4 this demodulator is used at the receiver side to recover the original signal back in form of a bit right so this we already know this y qpsk signal what we are receiving here this is in form of a plus minus cos omega ct because it is multiplied with i of t and i of t would take a plus one or minus one if it's zero would be minus one if it is one would be one that is the multiply with the q of t sine omega ct and q of t may also have a equal possibility of maybe a plus one or minus one there is similar plus one or minus one so we are getting plus minus cos omega ct or plus minus sine omega ct as the receive signal at the receiver antenna this is the similar over here now what we can do here we will produce the cos omega ct in the receiver the cos omega ct is multiplied with the upper branch so it is multiplied here so that is multiplied with this one so cos multiply with the cos square omega ct this is multiplied with the cos omega ct so we are getting the sine 2 omega ct here we are getting cos square so that would be a 1 plus 2 and if you expand this equation we already expand many times this one so we are not going to expand this so if you expand this equation here so we we are getting the two terms here but the terms which have a lower frequency component can be passed this can be compared with the threshold detector to check whether the received bit would be 1 or minus 1 compared with a 0 that would be zero if it is found above zero decision will be taken in favor of a one if it is found below zero it would take a decision in favor of a zero the similar happens for a lower branch in the lower branch the signal <coughs> which is available here is the cos omega ct which has been shifted with the pi by two phase shift <coughs> then we have sine omega ct so lower branch signal is multiplied with the sine omega ct so this is the we can have to separate the q portion here in earlier upper branch we can separate the i of t portion here we are separating the q of t portion then again we have a two terms at the input of low pass filter one term which has a lower frequency can pass then given to the detector this is again the threshold detector this is the threshold detector and the threshold detector compare your signal with the zero reference line and accordingly the bits can be separate in form of a one zero one zero now this goes to the odd bits this goes to the even bits now we compile we have separated it out at the transmitter side odd and even bits so here we compile the bits and we can have it naturally d of t string can be reconstructed at the receiver side we can place alternatively odd and even so that is the one we can see now the last one is uh, we have discussed qps uh, earlier qpsk have a uh, uh, bandwidth efficient scheme why so qpsk have a similar bandwidth of bpsk because it doesn't uh, need extra carrier signal whatever the carrier signal omega c we are using here in form of a sine and cos but this have a same frequency sine and cos so if you find the frequency spectrum so again we have a all the frequency spectrum is centered to the fc frequency but compared to the previous case what is the advantage we are getting in bpsk we, we require a minimum bandwidth rb right and but we will transmit only single bit here in the qpsk with the same bandwidth 
one symbol represent the two bit so we are transmitting two bit so with the same bandwidth uh, advantage we are transmitting almost the double information and this is the advantage of the qpsk so qpsk is simply known as a bandwidth efficient scheme and that part uh, you need to understand so in the next lecture uh, would be a last lecture for my portion and basically we will discuss about the qm scheme quadrature amplitude modulation scheme we can see the different variants of this one 16 qm 32 qm right and 64 qm like this and then we discuss about the last topic of Gaussian minimum shifting key and uh, Gaussian minimum shifting key. Gaussian minimum shifting key is very important because it is used in a third generation GSM system. Okay, so thank you to all.